Good morning, friends. It is early Thursday morning, sometime in January, January, year of our Lord, 2019. And behind me here, I probably have the biggest guitar case I've ever seen. It is huge. It is new project day. There you go. The size of this case, you don't really get the size of it till I come in front of it. It's huge. I mean, the length is not so much, but the width of it, wow. The reason it's big is because of the guitar inside it. And I'm going to show you the guitar. And this one. This is going to be a project and a half, this one. And it is, there you go, it's some kind of Jackson Keller, isn't it? I do know that. It's, uh, oh, I'll explain some more things in a moment. I'll just get it on the bench here. I'm going to bring the seat round again. And, uh, okay, so some guy, a young guy called Darius, contacted me. Was it this week? Might have been earlier this week, saying he'd got this guitar, the Floyd Rose is not right, and this, that, and the other's wrong. He'd actually taken it to a music shop. Uh, some friends of mine over there at Music Scene, Music Scene at Mansfield. And if they ever get anything in that they can't handle or can't deal with, and they only really do set up, but anything else they send to me. And uh, this is one of those occasions. And he had a problem with his Floyd Rose. He's saying it won't stay in tune. I thought, well, straight away, yeah, you've not stretched your strings enough. So how much you stretch your strings? He says once or twice. I says, well, five, try five, six or seven. So that is probably part of it. He also says the B string kept slipping out of the saddle lock here. I said, well, it's probably not tight enough. Um, and that was the case. I've already had a little look at this guitar. I've not done anything major on it. Uh, there's Jackson's back plate there. Don't know if that serial number means anything. I don't know where it was made. Uh, and that knob, that hideous skull tone knob has just fallen off. Anyway, a few other problems with this guitar. It says I could sort out for him. That knob has disappeared. I'm glad about that because I don't mind. Because we're going to change the knobs anyway. Uh, but a few other problems with it. Well, one, it has Duncan designed pickups. Now, I already kind of know what these pickups are. I would imagine they are the HB103 uh, series. Now, Duncan designed pickups are basically Duncan pickups, but they are made cheaper in, uh, oh, I was going to say cheaper, but they're budget pickups and they're made to um, Seymour Duncan specification, but out in um, Korea. So I would imagine that Artec made these. Now, some people like these uh, pickups. I don't. I think they're rubbish. I had some of these in a 1992 Hamer Diablo import slammer series. I, I was bought in 90, 1994, 95, something like that, whatever it was. And they're okay pickups, but they're not good. They're not great. So we've talked about pickup swaps. I've recommended to him some Iron Gears. Iron Gear Dirty Talk in the bridge for great metal and an iron gear rolling mill which is a path style pickup for cleans on the neck you will get those for around about 70 pounds a set delivered so that's the pickups we're going to go with he also said he wanted to change this um tremolo for a floyd rose i says why i says leave that in i'll get it set up properly i'm going to put a trem block in back of there as well so we can just have dive bomb mode it's always going to pull back in tune so why go spend a 200 pound on a tremolo if I can get this working right? So he's agreed with that. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to check the pots over. And this pot's not working, it cuts out halfway through. Music scene had a look at that, got some switch clean in there, switch cleaner in there, it didn't fix the problem. So I'm going to swap out the pots. We'll stick some CTS or some Borns in there. It depends what I've got in stock in my drawer. I've got loads of pots in my drawer. But I've probably not got a tone one, I don't know yet. But I'm going to have a tone one might be all right. Uh, the thing is, the... Uh, Oh, it's all right, it's a normal pot, that's great. Oh, it's a nice little bushing look. So you can just put a, uh, you know, the Allen key type knobs. Where is that school gone? It's completely disappeared. Yeah, it wants to. Don't come near me, does it? Stupid schools. Scrum cross, crossbones, I'll have you. I've got no idea where it's gone. Um, I'll dig it out in a bit. It's disappeared, it'll be about somewhere. I'll cross that later. So we're going to go with the, uh, going to go with some standard speed knobs. I imagine what we got in there. I've got a drawer full of. We'll go with some standard speed knobs. I've got some brand new ones here. Probably charge a pound a piece, pound fifty a piece for something like this. Um, we'll stick some normal ones with that on. Uh, I've not checked the frets yet, so I don't know what work actually extensive work this needs to do. I know we are going to swap the pots. We're going to swap the pickups. I'm going to set the tremolo. Uh, lovely, lovely thick piece of rosewood on this neck. I love a thick piece of rosewood. Fantastic. Nice big jumbo frets. I don't know the situation with the frets at the moment. I also don't know what pots are in there. So we're going to take off all the covers. 
I'm just going to take a fret rock and just check some of these frets while I'm here. Because I don't know if it needs a fret level or anything. There's one high one already. Two high ones already. Okay. I would imagine this is going to need a complete setup. Uh, so it's already going to have an intensive setup. Three, four. Right, this is going to need a fret level. Five, six. We've already got seven high frets on. That's going to need a complete fret level. Now, fret level we'll set up with a tremolo on there. It's going to cost you 100 and, is it 110 quid? I do about four things, 110 quid. A little bit extra for installing the pots, number 20 on there. You're looking at about 130 quid, 135 quid with a new set of strings. And uh, the price of the pickup. So that's going to cost him under 200 pounds. It's going to cost him just about 200 quid, I think. Pickups are going to be 70 quid. Um, so yeah, so that looks like what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I've already tried the tremolo. Uh, I can absolutely get that tremolo set up right. It's a beautiful, like a satin finish. It's a really nice looking tremolo. There's no reason why that tremolo should not hold tune and play perfectly. But I'm still going to put a um, small trem block in there. It's just basically a little 90 degree piece of metal held in with two screws and you've got a bolt with an Allen key thread and a nut to hold it in place and it will basically sit up against the block so it means we can only dive one we can only go down we can't pull back because it's it's pushing against that bolt but that's a great thing it means if you have the springs tighter on the claw um every even if you snap a string it's going to pull right back and all the other strings are going to stay in tune it's like having a fixed bridge with a dive bomb mode on there i'll explain more about that in a little while once i get to it so I'm going to let the owner know what I think with this guitar. I'm absolutely certain I'll get this tremolo set right. Floyd Roses are my thing. I've been setting up Floyd Roses for I don't know how many years. I've been a Floyd Rose fan since round about 1984, the first time I experienced one. And I've been a fan ever since. That is 35 years. So I've been piddling about with Floyd Roses 35 years. I can set a Floyd Rose up with brand new strings on it in around about 30 minutes from scratch. Uh, give it a good 45 minutes and you're laughing, aren't you? I charge £25 for a Floyd Rose setup just on its own. Why you just want the Floyd Rose setting up just on its own though? Because you're going to need the rest of the guitar setting up. But that's what I do. If you're already having some work done, I will charge you an extra £15 for a Floyd Rose. So uh, I'm going to price this all up. I'm going to look at the electrics. We've also got the price of the pots to go on and the uh, tremolo block and the pickups i would be thinking we're going to be around about 100 pounds for that around about 125 pounds later it's going to cost him 225 quid but he's going to get a fantastic superbly supremely playable guitar with level and recount crowned frets and it's he's going to love it if this is his thing he's absolutely going to love it um not my thing anymore I, there was a time i was going to buy a jackson kelly and I'm kind of glad I didn't because I've moved on from that now and I'm quite a bit of a, I've moved, I've changed quite a lot from being, don't forget I was in a punk metal band, Concrete Socks, it was my band I started in 1984 and I've played punk and metal, well heavy metal probably for most of my life but I've moved on a bit now and I only play in church now and I play worship music and my main guitars, I do have an Edwards Explorer with, with, with um, active pickups which is great for metal but I, I have Fenders, I have a Fender Telecaster and a Fender Strat now and my Fender Telecaster is my favourite guitar. Anyway, I digress, I move on. We're not talking about my guitars, we're talking about this one. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to get the back plates off, I'm going to have a look inside. I've had this plugged in. And it plays great, it sounds rubbish. Those pickups are crap. They are Duncan's and HP but A lot of people on Mahama Fan Club, I'm a member of Mahama Fan Club, I've been there for years, and a lot of people give these a good rep. I don't, I think they're weak. But not for a metal, certainly not for a metal guitar. It's supposed to be based on the Seymour Duncan Distortion SH, is it the SH6? It's supposed to be based on that. They sound nothing like them. They sound rubbish. They sound like cheap, uh, cheap Chinese pickups to me. So we're going to get some good pickups in there. I'm going to go to Iron Gear. I have, this is one of my favourite pickups, Iron Gear Dirty Talk. That's a brilliant pickup. I've got one there. It's supposed to be going in my strap. I've also got one I've not even tried yet. This has not been anything. This is a Tone Rider Generator. These are all F-spaced. I had one of these in a client guitar. These sound amazing. This would be perfect for this guitar. I wonder if he wants a Zebra. You know, we could go with that. I could use this as a test guitar, couldn't I, for that pickup. Be a fantastic pickup in there. Um, so I've not decided yet. Probably going to go with Iron Gears, because I know they're good, I know we've got a good rep, and they're quite cheap. So, 
you know, I'll do a bit of digging. Uh, we're going to get some bits off this guitar. What's a new pickup in there? I might have one knocking about in stock. Okay, and like I say, I'm going to have a look at the electrics and I'll be back very shortly with an update. Okay, so I have uh, taken them back off, looked at the parts. They're just two standard generic no-name pots in there, probably made in China. Um, I've had some of these myself. I bought a batch of them, quite cheap. And they work and they're decent, but they don't last long. So we're going to swap them out. The original three-way I'm going to keep in there. Uh, I can work around that. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to go with I have a brand new Gibson volume pot there. These are about 13 quid. Uh, it's not been in a guitar uh, but it is opened. Um, I will show you the gubbins there. Uh, so I'm going to do I'm going to put that one in for the volume because it's a great pot. Uh, plus I don't have a guitar for it anyway. So I'm only going to charge him 10 quid for that. And I have here a brand new <coughs> Alpha Tone Pot. I'm going to go with an Alpha because Alpha make good pots. Um, so that is going to go in. Beautiful one. Uh, really, really nice. I think these are about four or five quid. So uh, I'm not going to charge a lot for that. I'll be going, capacitor wise, I'll be going with my favourite capacitors. These are 1960s or even 1950s. New old stock. They're old stock, but they're new. I bought a batch of these last year. These are my favorite capacitor I stick these in all of my own guitars I use these rather than orange drops so that's gonna be a couple of quid for that two or three quid um, what else tremolo block now the tremolo block I'm gonna explain it you've got the block there and this sits inside and it's got a screw and the screw pushes against this block there and it stays in position and that block the big tremolo block there pushes against it like so it means you can only go that way you can only go down you can't pull the tremolo back because it hits that bolt and this is the gubbins and these are 11 quid I got this from Turkey I believe someone's building them in Turkey used to get them just from Floyd upgrades but that's the job and they say this is a block you could go dive bomb down but when it comes back it hits that bolt there because you adjust this bolt on this screw and that holds it in place and we just affix that to the guitar base with these two screws so that is going to go on there. I've noticed it also needs new pickup rings because these two are split and cracked. I may have some in stock, I may not. Uh, this is really uncomfortable because this, when I play, this catches my fingers. You've got a big chip there and you've got a crack there on each corner. I will also replace these screws. Um, I'll have some in stock somewhere because they're a little bit rusty and crap or I'll just clean them up. Um, so that is what we're doing. The knobs are coming off. We're going to go with standard speed knobs. Did I show them before? Can't remember. We're just going to go with a couple of these. If they don't fit, we'll make them fit. Just a standard couple of speed knobs. Now, the owner has asked that I move the volume out of the way and put that where the tone is, the tone where the volume is. I'm a little bit reluctant to do that because I believe you need to grab your volume. So I think once these stupid skull knobs are out of the way, um, we can go with just regular knobs in the right position. So that's what I'm inclined to do. I could have a look to see what gold ones look like. Um, you never know. Regarding pickups, definitely going to go with Iron Gear, Dirty Talk. And I'm wondering if the owner wants, I've got this, it's brand new. He could have this from me, save me ordering one. If he wants a zebra configuration, I think it'll look pretty nice. Put two, two zebra pickups in there and we'll go and buy either a rolling mill or a the blues engine. Blues engine might be nice in there as well. Uh, I'm going to do some research and see what I think. I will charge it in cost for the dirty talk, so I'm not out for making money on it. I just do not have a guitar for it right now. Um, so I think that is probably an option. If you want an all black one, I'll keep this and I'll go and order him an all black one. So hardware wise, a Gibson volume pot, a Alpha tone pot, the three way switch we're going to keep. We're going to put a trem uh, lock device in there behind the tremolo. We're going to order two new pickup rings unless I have some in my parts drawer down here. I've got bits and bobs knocking about all over. Don't look like I've got any anymore. Uh, no, I've got to go and order. So I've got one. That's not enough, is it? That will... It's a slanted one anyway. We need a straight one. So I'm going to order some pickup rings. They're going to be about five or six quid, I reckon. Um, so that's what I do with tremolo to me. I think the tremolo is going to be absolutely fine. Ideally, it would have a, um, 
a steel block. I may have a real Floyd Rose steel block knocking about somewhere. If that fitted, maybe we could fit that to it. I don't know yet. We'll have to see. Um, then again, it'll, it'll be okay. Tone-wise, we're going to get the tone. I'm more convinced now that tone comes from pickups rather than um, anything else, rather than wood or anything, because I, I've done a test on different woods, tone woods, and it doesn't really cut the mustard with me, but pickups do make a difference more than anything. Electrics are electrics, a capacitor is a capacitor. A pot, maybe a pot is a pot, but they are better built pots and they are better made capacitors. Uh, how much it makes, how much difference it makes to the tone, I'm undecided about that at the moment. But anyway, what I'm going to do next with this guitar is I'm going to get the strings off. We're going to go across the neck with a fret rocker and we're going to check all of the frets to see how many uneven frets we have. Any more than five, it's going to be a complete fret level. I already know this is going to be a complete fret level from experience. Uh, and a fret level on its own is going to take four hours minimum. So a lot of work to be done. I'm not going to charge for little things like installing the pickups blah 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 it's, it's going to be another 10-15 minutes on what I'm already doing you know I'd, I'd be a bit be a bit nasty me to charge extra for stuff like that so I've knocked him some money off I've given him a quote of what I want for labour I've knocked him a good hour off so he's saving 25-30 quid on what I would normally have to charge anyway so I think it's all going to be good I'm waiting for him to get back to me so a little things I can do while I'm here is I can set the intonation on the tremolo blah 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 before I remove everything. I'm going to come back, we're going to check the frets. Once the frets are checked, I'm going to send him a video. Uh, once he's okayed all the work, we shall crack on with it at the first available opportunity. Okay, I've just found out something very interesting and what uh, made me a little bit, not so much suspicious, but excited was when I removed the truss rod cover and I saw this. And you might be thinking, what's to get excited about there? Well, this is a like a barrel type nut adjuster for the truss rod and in my experience you only really get these on higher end guitars and I'm thinking PRS, Gibson, Edwards, ESP, any of the Japanese makers so that got me really excited because I have an Edwards Explorer and it was made at the ESP factory and that has this type of adjuster on there and all of the Japanese, I believe the Japanese Jacksons, have this type of adjuster as well. And then, so I got really excited about that. I thought, oh, really, it's a better guitar now. Then I realised, I thought, maybe removing the neck would give me more of an idea. And that probably will. But what made me even more excited was, remember when I told the owner, I says, no need to change your Floyd Rose. Let's go with this one. It should be good. And there you go. And I took it off. And that is not an, a, 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 that is not a zinc uh, thing that it will be a steel block. Why do I know? It's a Takuchi Japan tremolo block. That means this is a high spec Jackson Kelly. This is not your normal run of the mill Indonesian. I won't say garbage, but it's not your Indonesian type of fear. This will be a Japanese Jackson Kelly. So it is a good guitar with Japanese parts. Could even be Goto parts. I don't know. The parts are. They're not brilliant, but pots are pots. I have some of these pots. I bought some from China. I think they were five quid for about four of them. And they work absolutely fine. I wouldn't guarantee how long they're going to last, but they work fine anyway. But we are upgrading them anyway. But yeah, really quite excited about this now. A couple of other things I need to point out. Pickup rings I've added. This one's cracked here. This one's cracked here. We're going to get some new pickup rings. I am now inclined to remove the neck. Uh, first I need to check that the truss rod is working so I'm going to check it for straightness right here and now on camera. I should be able to use my Edwards truss rod key because that was built at the ESP factory. I would imagine also it's possible these Japanese ones would be built at the ESP plant or the ESP factory in Japan. So let us get out. There you go. I do believe I've got four different sizes of these, or three different sizes. So let's get out. I've got them marked up. 8 mil, 6.25 mil. Let's try that one. That's a quarter. It's not a quarter. 7 mil could be. And it's a 7 mil. And let me turn the camera around. So you get to see what I'm seeing here. And where are we? Let's go there. That's why I have this camera's position because I can turn it to any position I want 
and it gets me where I need to be. And there you go, how's that for you? So there you go, 7mm, got 7 marks on it there lot. And I'm just going to check, I would imagine it would be a long scale, so 25 and a half. And that's going to have a little bit of backbone in there, so let's try, let's see if the truss rod's working both ways. Oh, that's tight. And now we're now loosening it. Is it a two-way truss rod? I'm thinking it ought to be. Right, that is now completely loose. And completely loose. That neck has a little bit of relief, completely loose. How oh, quite. That's quite good. That's quite good because we had back bow in there. Let's see if it goes anymore. This will just it's not a two-way. These can't be a two-way, it's just a one-way truss rod. Look, that's great because we have a little relief in there. But that'll be pulled back to straight, we'll tighten it up and it'll be pulled back straight. So I'm really happy that the truss rod works fine. I want to get the neck absolutely straight because then we can check the level of the frets. And that is just off straight. We need to go and probably another eighth of a turn. About there should do. Let's have a look. No, we're not quite there yet. Let's keep going. Give it another turn. And there we are. We have that neck straight. I'm really, really happy with that. Maybe another just a, a nip. Don't want to go any more than that because it's now starting to bow at this end. And there you go. That neck is straight. What's good about that is now we're going to check the frets in a moment. We've got the neck lovely and straight i'm going to go across with fret rocker really really quickly while the camera is on here to see if we need a fret level i believe we do but then again i may be wrong high spot there high spot there high spot there so our two frets are high three three high frets so far Four, five high frets, six, six high frets so far, seven. We have nine high frets with the um, guitar in a level or the neck in a straight position. So we do need to give a complete fret level. I can't do any more than five with a hand file. I have to do the lot using a uh, leveling beam. You've seen this many, many times before. We'll take a steel leveling beam. This is milled, both edges milled perfectly flat. 240 grit sandpaper on that side, 400 on that side. And when it comes to leveling the frets, we do them all in one go. It's a long-winded process because it means once I've flattened the frets and got them all level, I have to put that crown back in. I'll explain all that as I get to it. This one's going to be a long video because this guitar needs a lot of work. I also need to mention that these frets stick out on this edge just here. Not too much, but they are sticking out. So we're going to take a file and take a Swiss cut. Number four cut file. This is Swiss file. And we'll just, we'll be taking off these edges of these frets. There you go. And we're just gonna remove the edges of these frets just to stop them sticking in your fingers another job i've got to do so we'll get all the fingerboard tapes up we'll get on with that later that's already a lot better there um i'm going to move the camera we're going to go across with a fret rocker we're going to check all of the frets before i do that i'm going to remove the neck in fact i could do that now couldn't i i'm going to remove the neck and see if it gives us any more information inside the neck pocket that tells us where the guitar was made or whatever you may as well stay right there let me just bring the camera up 
like I say, it's going to be a long video this one. Maybe it's going to be the longest one I've ever done. I don't know. Let's just move on. I don't need that there. I'm going to drop the guitar down. Can you see? You can see. That's brilliant. I knew this was pretty good. Once I saw, because I don't know if it's tremolo titanium, but it looks it's either brushed chrome or brushed steel. It looks to be a very good tremolo, and I thought that when I first saw it. There's a serial number on the back. It is a seven-figure serial number, starting with number nine. I will do some digging. Uh, I'm going to try and find some information on this guitar later. The body is all scratched up and battered. That's not a problem. But like I say, there are cheap pots in there, but that is not a major concern or a worry for me. Pots are pots. You know, they may just not last as long as bigger brand names. And certainly the volume has failed. So. All the bits go in a pot. All of the bits of this guitar are in this pot. Everything goes in a pot. Okay, is there any information on the back of there? No, there is not. Very, very nice though. But we know it's now a Takuchi Tremolo. Let's have a look inside the neck pocket. And what do we have? No information whatsoever. Um, we do have there in the neck pocket these figures there. I don't know what they mean, but there is a date in there. 21st of January, February, March, 21st of April, the year 2004. I don't know if you can see that. I can just make it out. I'm going to get a magnifying glass on there. Let's see where we are. Well, it could be 2009. I could not exactly make that out. Can you make it out? What year does that say there? 200. Is that a four? Looks like a four to me. And fourth month, 21st day. So 21st of April 2004 is likely. That's quite interesting. We do know it is a solid wood construction because of the grain there. And it's a two-piece. That's very nice. Uh, I don't know what wood that would be. Older, maybe. I don't know. But no idea. So the neck, what does the neck say to us? It says nothing. All it says is 4.11. Does that say November 2004? I have no idea. Uh, KS stamp on there. Uh, we know they use tight bond to glue the neck on because you can see it there a lot as well. So, what do we think? I have no idea. Anyway, I'm going to put the neck back on. I'm going to move the camera. We're going to go across with a fret rocker. We're going to show all of the frets that need levelling and we're going to show that the guitar needs a complete fret level. That on its own for a fret level is going to cost you £100. Um, there's really no way we can get around that because it's time consuming, it takes a long time and it is a lot of work. So when I find my zipper, dapper, dibber, dabber, my controller, which is here, I can turn off the video, I will come back in a few minutes. This is the last part of this appraisal video, which will all be included in the final video anyway. But this is the this is going to be the final part of the appraisal video. And what we're going to do is <clears throat> we're going to set the neck straight, which I already have. We have a notched straight edge, goes over the frets, and there you go. And if you see along here, we have the neck absolutely straight. There's no gap under there. Uh, if I had a light on me, I could shine it under there, but I don't have a light on me at the moment. Do I have one over here? No, you've got to take my word for it. I think you can see that the neck is straight. So what we do is take a fret rocker and it has four different lengths. And that is because we can only we only do three frets at a time because that then if we have a high fret, we're going to get a rock like that. And if we get level frets, we're not going to get a rock like that. So we're already determined that fret is high. And we're going to go across the whole length of the neck and we're going to see which frets are rocking it and which ones aren't now okay that will only determine what fret has a high spot akin to the two next to it or the two either side of it so this 
one fret here affects its relationship with these two and these two. This fret here affects the relationship between these two and these two. You know how it works. But once we get to more than four or five frets, we're not, it's not possible for us to just file that fret and get it level with those two because it's going to affect the two next to it, like I say. Once we get to four, get more than five frets, I say we're going to have to do the whole lot, which is what we're going to have to do. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to check all of the frets in the centre, the outside, and the inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark off any ones that have a high spot. So I'm going to go across all 20, is it 24 fret this one? 24 frets. So we're going to go and we'll start on this one. And I hope you can hear it. I've got the camera closer so hopefully you can hear it. And that is high in the centre area. And the nearest to the camera area. So two points here. So that fret has a high spot. Next one. That's good. Next one. High in the middle. High again on the near side. So we already have two high frets, both in two spots. So you have four high spots over two high frets so far. Five also has high spots, so we can already see a pattern emerging here. Three high frets out of the first five. We're now going to turn over because the frets are getting closer together. Middle and far side again. Four high frets already. side that's five high frets we're already now at the realm where we need to do the whole lot in one go it's a big job it takes a long time that's always high in the middle six high frets Fret 12, by the way, it's fret 15. Because 17 is high across the whole length of the fret. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 high frets so far. Again, across the whole length, eight high frets. High, high, okay, there. So that is, I believe that's nine high frets. Last one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine high frets. And over those nine frets, we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, eighteen high spots over nine frets. Uh, just to clarify, we're going to go listen out for the rock. Just to show you where the frets are level, there is no rock. There, there, listen for the rock. Just to show that I'm playing fair. Can you hear all that? I've been accused once of leveling some frets that didn't need leveling. The guy was even here while I showed him seven frets rocking. He's gone now, he's been blocked on all my pages. 
Don't want to mention his name. I will mention his name if he ever brings you any feedback. But anyway, here we go, listen. And that's it. Shown all the frets to be rocking with the neck straight. This guitar needs a fret level. Uh, I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to show all the frets, and then we can send this video to the owner. So I've just received a message from Darius. He has confirmed it is a Japanese guitar made in the early 2000s. I suspect this is a 2004. I also suspect it was likely made at the ESP plant. I know ESP have made, um, they made the early Kramer guitars. I had one, I had a 2004, not 2004, a 1983 uh, Kramer Focus 3000, which was made at the ESP plant in Japan in the 80s. Um, I know ESP also make Edwards guitars at, the, at their own plant. Uh, it's why I thought this might be Japanese because of a truss rod nut. I would suspect this is probably also made at the ESP plant. Don't get me wrong, maybe Takuchi have a plant. I don't know, I don't know what Takuchi do. I just know they make good tremolos. And this being a Takuchi tremolo means it's very, very well made. One of the best of a licensed one. So I certainly would not be swapping this out. I'll be keeping that. So. Let's um, see where we are with this. So my recommendation is we change the pots, uh, all the electrics, we leave the switch in there, we change the pots, we're gonna go with a Gibson and an Alpha, uh, brand new. We'll go with a Mollard mustard capacitor, that's on the electrics, I'll choose some nice wire in there. Um, regarding the uh, pickups, I'm recommending iron gear pickups. I will go and pick a set for um, for Darius, I would possibly suggest, if he wants to, we could go with, this is brand new. This was in my fender strap for a week. It is an Iron Gear Dirty Talk, a fabulous, fabulous pickup, reminiscent of the Gibson 498T, which is my favorite Gibson pickup. Uh, this is very same high output. This would be fantastic for metal, just to show what it looks like. Uh, you'll be looking at something like this in there, it's going to look quite nice uh, and another zebra at the other side going the opposite way uh, I could see that working well so regarding the frets I've marked off the nine frets you'll be able to see them hopefully you can see them right now uh, a few down here a few down here frets are marked off it, the guitar does need a fret level that is a four to five hour job with a setup in itself I'll also be installing new pickups, doing all the electrics um, and filing the edges of the frets that are sticking over the fingerboard. I'm not, probably not charging too much for that. I would think I could probably get all the labour on this done. I'd have thought £135 would just about cover everything. It's going to have, I'd imagine, six hours work. It's going to have a lot of work. Complete fret level with a setup I would charge £100 for. So I think for the rest, we're getting your Floyd Rose done, stripped and set up, and all your electrics done and your pickups installed, you are getting a very good deal. Uh, lovely, lovely guitar. I can't wait to get these stupid knobs off it because it looks stupid. Uh, I will experiment with knobs on there. Pickups, certainly I would be changing the pickups, but there's absolutely no reason at all to change the Floyd Rose. It is a really, really good unit, and I will get it set up so it plays perfectly. I am going to install uh, the fret stopper, uh, the, not fret stopper, the tremolo stopper or the tremolo blocker, just so we get dive bomb mode. This will work an absolute treat. These are, I believe, for 10 or 11 pounds. I'll find out what they're worth and I'll charge you exactly the same. I was gonna save it for one of my guitars, but I don't have it anymore. So you can have that the cost price. I will add another spring inside the tremolo cavity. Well, every spring's nice and tight anyway. And we'll also need to get a couple of pickup rings. So I will get everything priced up. We'll talk pickups. I will be thinking definitely go with the Iron Gear Dirty Talk um, for a bridge pickup and maybe we should look at a rolling mill or I would, I would think the rolling mill would be ideal because a rolling mill is a path type pickup. That's your Dirty Talk uh, for metal. But I would have thought the rolling mill would be a perfect neck pickup. Uh, as well to complement this. It does actually, we sell this as a set, we sell the Dirty Talk for bridge and a rolling mill for neck. You'll get beautiful cleans on the neck pickup. Uh, another option we could look at is we could put a push-pull tone pot 
uh, on there so we can split the coils if you wanted to go with that option. But anyway, that is my recommendation. Um, I would think around about £135 for all of the work. It's going to take me a whole day to do this. Uh, so six hours actual work time is going to take me eight or nine hours. So I would want a complete day on doing this. Um, I'm going to send you a video shortly. The tremolo. Absolutely fine with this tremolo. Nothing wrong with it. Seems absolutely fine to me. I would definitely stick with that. So that's the conclusion of this appraisal video. You had my recommendations. I think your parts with your pickups are going to cost you around about £100. Labour, I'm going £135. All done with a pickup upgrade. Uh, complete fret level of a whole lot. It's going to cost you £235. Welcome back fret friends and welcome to part two of this Jackson Kelly overhaul. Now, I've been doing a bit of digging, found out that this is a Jackson Kelly star model. It was only made apparently between the year 2000 and 2001 in Japan. So if that's, that can't say 2003 or 2004 on the neck from what I said on the first part of the video, um, it's got to be from 2000 or 2001. The actual model name is a Jackson KS2 Kelly or Jackson Kelly Star, what a fabulous guitar. But anyway, um, I've been in touch with the owner, Darius. Uh, we have okayed all the work, the work has all been commissioned. There are a couple of changes to what we were going to do. We're not gonna move the tone pot and the volume pot and swap them around, or the controls, we're gonna leave them as they are. We're gonna go with new knobs. Um, there's also been a change on what pots we are going to use, and we are going to use a Bourne's 500K audio pot or volume pot. These are my favorite pots. Um, well, I say favourite, one of my favourites, and we are going to go with a Alpha Push Pull Pot uh, for the tone. We're going to split the coils. Pickups, uh, pickups wise, we are going with. Um, with or I've ordered this morning an Iron Gear Dirty Talk with Zebra Bobbins. That's going to go in the bridge, and we're going to go with a, a, a Rolling Mill All Black in the neck. The Rolling Mill is like a modern PAF or patent applied for pickup based on the Gibson PAF from the 50s, I believe. Um, so that is the combination is going with. So that's electric sorted out. Capacitor, my standard capacitors. New old stock, Mullard mustards. Absolutely love these. I stick these in all my own guitars. So that's going to go in there. Three way switch we don't need to change. Um, pickups are going to come out. Duncan designed, not brilliant pickups. Not bad pickups, but not brilliant. I'd, I would say these were uh, Duncan designed HB 103s, but I've been told that it's probably a 103 and a 104, so I don't know. So we'll have a look when we get them out. But all I can really do today is I can work on the neck as much as I want, so I can get the frets leveled if I want to. I'm going to remove the electrics and the pickups, I'm going to clean up the three way switch, and I'm going to get the pots in there today, uh, and that more or less will be it. I can remove the neck and I can get to work on the frets as well if I want to get the frets leveled. It depends, it's a Friday afternoon, I've got a very busy weekend. Um, so I may not do anything on it yet, but we have got the go ahead. We're prepared to go. We've got bits on order. I've also ordered some new pickup rings, same as these ones, but I had to go. I couldn't get any flat flat, but I can only get sloping ones uh, unless I went to Portugal. So I've gone to Portugal and I've got the flat flat, five mil and three mil for there. It's going to take a week maybe for those to arrive. So they get here when they get here. So I'm in no rush to get this guitar done. Um, screws wise, I don't know if any screws come with the pickup rings, I doubt they will at the price I've paid for them. Uh, but I'm sure I'll have some screws knocking about, or we'll clean these ones up anyway. So that's it. Gonna crack on with the guitar, get the pickups out, I'll come back and let you know what they were. And um, we'll do as much as we can. Um, and wait for parts to arrive. So stay tuned, come back later, and I'll see you very soon. So just as I thought, I've got the pickups, well I've got them halfway out, um, there's some wax that's fallen out of these, but just as I suspected, these are HB 103s as I suspected, I don't know if you can see it, and they can see it on the label on there, should say HB 103N, and this should be HB 103B, um, they're just right for the period, and I do know, I won't say I just know um, guitars, well I do, I just know guitars. I was at a warehouse, guitar warehouse in Auctioneers last week and I was showing around. I can't say a lot about it because I may be uh, helping them out in the future or working there, I don't know yet, we'll have to see. But I was uh, I was showing around their showroom upstairs and there were a couple of really rare guitars in there and I didn't know what they were, especially the first one. 
And I said, it's going to be around about, about 1950s. And he says, it is, it's in 1955. Blah, 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 blah. And I showed another one, an old Gibson. And I says, that's even older. I says, I don't know what it is. Don't know what model it is, but that's in 1920s, I think. That was just by looking at it. Uh, I pretty much, I do know, and I'm not an expert. I don't know all guitars by a long shot. I don't know it all by a long shot, but sometimes I can just look at a guitar and I kind of know where it's from, what kind of hardware it's going to have inside it, and blah, 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 whatever. But anyway, these HB 103s, Duncan Design, nice big clear stamps. On there you'll see the embossed Duncan Design, Duncan Design. These will be made in Korea, most likely by Artec, who are a fantastic pickup maker by the way. And uh, these are specific to the guitars of this era. They're supposed to be based, the HB 103 is supposed to be based on the um, Seymour Duncan SH, is it the SH5, Super Distortion, or is that the Custom Custom? Or it would be the SH6, the Distortion or Super Distortion. I'm sure that's what they're based on. It's a shame really, because you don't sound anything like it. You don't sound anything like the Seymour Duncan. I don't think these pickups are any good at all. And some people, I've had quite a few people say these pickups are great. I don't think so. These things batter them. Iron gear, they're much better. And this, and I've not even tried this yet, but I know these are better. Tone Riders. This cost me about £40. These will cost you £40, £45. I actually got a great deal on this. From Northwest Guitars because I've waited so long for it, but did me this for £30 delivered. God bless you, Northwest Guitars. We didn't get off on the right foot, me and Northwest Guitars, but we certainly made up for it. What a great bunch of guys they are out there, Kevin and Sam. Listen, them guys are fantastic. But there you go, and these are a lot, lot better pickup. But anyway, this guitar is going to be having iron gears in it, it's going to have an iron gear dirty top in the bridge and an iron gear rolling mill modern in the neck for cleans. Um, the good thing about the uh, pickup slots in these is the holes for the pickup rings are fine. Now the pickup rings have had it. They're both cracked and, bro and are broken. I've ordered some more. They're coming from Portugal. So that further ado, really, I'm just going to get these pickups out, get all these knobs off, get these pots off. We're going to get the new ones in, I believe. And uh, if I do anything else, I'm going to work on the neck. So stay tuned. Just wanted to show this little bit about the pickups. Good news for it, friends, day after ordering, the pickups are here and we have iron gear dirty torque going in the bridge, iron gear rolling milk going in the neck. Uh, the dirty torque, Alnico 5 Mabler, uh, uh, Alnico 5 Magnet, I don't know what Mabler it is, I've just invented that. Alnico 5 Magnet putting out 16.4k ohms resistance, the rolling mill, uh, which is a modern PAF pickup, DC resistance. Neck 8.5 K ohms, so fantastic. If you want to read any more bump, it's there for you to read. Pause, enlarge, read, and back. And there you go. So these are the pickups uh, I recommended to the guitar owner. Dirty Tor Bridge, rolling mill. He wants a zebra and a black rolling mill. This normally pairs with a blues engine, but I wanted to pair it with this rolling mill because I think this is going to give you better clean. So this was my recommendation, so if it doesn't work, it's my fault. Anyway, it will work, it'll be fantastic. So, also, pots-wise, we have an alpha push-pull on the tone, and we just have a regular 500k audio pot by Bournes, or a Bournes audio pot there. Um, the original three-way toggle switch there. Everything is earthed, you've got insulating, or what's it, what's a, what's a, I always forget what that's called. The uh, shielding paint, that's right, in there, covered by gloss, uh, again, inside, so we've got good shielding in there, that'll help if we split the coils. The owner didn't know if he was going to use coils, was coil splitting, but the thing is, the pot is the same price as a standard pot anyway, so I says, I might as well, might as well stick you one in, I've charged, I think I charged him what, seven or eight quid, which is what these pots cost me anyway. Wiring diagram, obviously we're going to change the colour codes, but that's a standard wiring diagram from Seymour Duncan website. It's got the push-pull tone, standard volume, three-way toggle, really simple to follow. Uh, like I say, the pots are in there. We'll be going with a Mullard mustard capacitor, 0 0.047, whatever farads that is, which is standard for uh, two humbuckers. And uh, yeah, pretty standard affair. So I'm going to crack, out, crack on with that as one. The pickup rings have not arrived. 
So that's a bit of a shame. Uh, I could use the old ones for now, we could swap them over later. So I'm going to crack on with that today, I think. Get the wire, at least I'll get the wiring done, and I could just leave the pickups out, and we can add the pickups later when the pickup rings get here. Then I can move on to the neck. Back soon. Um, regarding um, ground wires uh, on guitars, I've done a little space saving trick on this. And the idea is not to have too many ground wires going to the back of a volume pot. And how I've done this is, got cavity ground wires there and there. You've got a ground wire coming from the input jack here, coming all the way through the body uh, into this cavity here coming through and then what I've done is I've put the ground wire on this cavity and all the, all the ground wires now are coming out the back or soldered to this point here again another ground you've got cavity paint inside there and that means all those ground wires all we need to do is run one wire to the back of the pot the hot wire from the um, input jack is here which separates from its ground at this point right here so it just, it's a little space saver, it means we've got to solder less ground wires on the back of a pot, uh, thus protecting this from, we could possibly damage it by getting it too hot, putting too many wires on there. I don't like sol uh, soldering five or six wires on there, I like to keep it as minimal as possible. So hopefully that's all going to work, because the ground connections are from, you've got this cavity, this cavity, this cavity there, all the cavity paint should all work, it's all running the same ground, just makes things that a little bit easier. Now. Gibson themselves have started putting in their uh, cavities, so for less ball for instance, like a diamond shape, and they're now putting their ground right in the centre on a lug rather than on the back of the pots. Just makes things easier, it just means you've got to run one ground wire to the back of a volume pot, and it's just, it just, it's a lot neater, and you've got less chance of damaging the pot. So just a little tip there. Always look and work out your route for your ground wires. Never look, see where you can save something. If you can solder them all the ground wires to one lug, then that lug, run one wire from that lug to the back of the pot. It's going to make things a lot simpler in the long run. And now I have done as much as I can do regarding the wiring uh, because the, I need, I'm waiting for the pickup rings to arrive. So I'm not putting the pickups in the guitar until the pickup rings have arrived. I've had to order those from Guitars and Woods in Portugal, so it could be by the end of the week. But I'm going to show where I've got to with the wiring. And there you go, and I think you'll agree that that looks very, very neat. The only wires missing are the split coil wires go into the push-pull pot, um, the hot wires go into the three-way selector, and the ground wires going back to one back to one of the pots. We'll probably go to the back of this pot. So we're just missing the pickup wires there. Um, nothing else needs to go on the back of a volume pot. That's all done. We've got one grounding wire done right at the back there that holds all of the grounds on this screw inside there which I've already shown. So that is really, really simple. You'll also see that I've ground the push-pull pot and I've got the capacitor in there down all routed super, super neat just in there. It's a Mullard Mustard 0.022 tone cap. I love the Mullard Mustards, they're my favourites. I stopped using orange drops and started using these a couple of years ago fantastic really good so that's as much really as I can do is there anything else to tell you no that's it just need to wire the pickups in there and that is all done like I say nice and neat colouring there's no scheme to that colouring I just use the wire I've got the most of just to get some out of the way because I tend to use red white and black the most so I thought I'd get rid of some of this blue some of the yellow some of the green so there you go everything is all configured we're just waiting in to wire the pots no, not the pots, the pickups. Pickups are here. But the pickup rings that I have are both broken. Well, this one has a corner missing there. So I'm not using that, the bridge one. And the neck one also has a corner missing there. So I'm not using those, I'm putting brand new ones in there. So I've just got to be patient, just got to wait for them to arrive. And that's it. Next part of the job I'm going to have to do is I'm going to level fret. So, uh, more about that soon. I was twiddling my, twiddling my thumbs wondering what I was going to do this afternoon. And I thought, well, my football team aren't playing until 5.30 tonight. My Leeds United supporter. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to put the pickups in. And I know the pickup rings aren't here, but I'll take the pickups so we don't move anywhere, which I've done. And I'll get it all wired up. 
and I have got it all wired up and there you go and that's everything complete and I've tested the pickups and everything's working right the tone's working the volume's working uh, the push pull coil splits working everything works just fine so the body is now more or less redder barring one oh one thing I've got to mention as well the tram stopper I've installed <coughs> if you haven't seen what that is that is to stop your tremolo it can be dipole mode only you won't be able to pull you won't be able to pull the tremolo up you can only go dark let's do it from here so you know you'll only be able to dive one you won't be able to pull it up because of that stopping it's called a tram stop and we do that and the block sits against this I've already adjusted it to where it needs to be and it's locked off now <coughs> and it means the tremolo block itself will sit on that screw there and won't move it means we have the springs tighter and every time uh, we use the tremolo when it pulls back to, to position it will always pull back into perfect tune because we'll have the springs tighter and also even if you snap a string it will always be in perfect tune so that's it this body is more or less ready just wait for the pickup rings to arrive and we can get these pickups fitted properly and get the knobs on and that will be done so there you go we have a Bourne's 500k audio pot for volume and a Alpha B500 or a linear pot for tone and push pull coil split fantastic Okay, you're probably not going to see from where you are, but I've been across, I leveled the frets with a whetstone. Uh, once I'd gone with a whetstone, I went with a levelling beam. Uh, this has got 240 grit paper that side, which I've already been with, just to take the main off. And I'm now going to, grow, going to go across with 400 grit. Now these beams, this levelling beam, is milled absolutely flat on this edge, and absolutely flat on this edge. And I've covered the frets in pen. And all we're going to do is, we're just going to remove all of the pen. Once all the pens are moved, we know we've got the frets level with each other. It shouldn't take too long, and it hasn't. What we'll do is we're going to follow a radius. Then we're going to check the frets. And that is pretty much done. But what we've done is all the pens removed, I'm going to give a white. But what we've done is we've flattened the frets now across this way, they are now flat. We need to put that arc back in uh, across this way, which is called a recrown. What we're going to do first is we're going to go across with a Fret rocker, just make sure we've got the frets level. And the main gist of the work is going to come next uh, when we re crown the frets. The frets are level, or well, they appear to be level so far. What I'll do is I'll move the camera shortly. And I will come and crown the fret, show you how it's done, and then I'll get on and get the rest done. Um, the pickup rings arrived this morning, so the body and the pickup, the pickups are in. <coughs> Excuse me, I have, a, I have quite a bad cold at the moment. The pickup rings are on the guitar, the pickups are in, all the electrics are done. All I'm waiting for is for me to get this neck finished. The frets are all level, that's absolutely wonderful. So that's beautiful, really, really pleased with that. I will get a 14 inch radius block, <coughs> which is there. 14 inch radius, blah, blah, blah. Just gonna get some 400 grit paper on there. 400 grit paper on there. And all we're gonna do is just re profile these frets all up and down the length. And all we're gonna do is on there, and we're just gonna make sure we kept that 14 inch profile And now all of the frets will be profiled to this radius, like so, all across the length. And that feels pretty good. So we'll just clean it up. I'm 
going to move the camera, get all these frets taped up now, tape up the whole fingerboard, we are going to re-crown these frets, so you be with me, I'll get the fingerboard all taped up, and we can crack on, get these frets crowned, uh, once they're crowned we'll get them polished, we'll get the neck back on, we'll get some strings on, get the nut back on, get some strings on and get the guitar set up, but, but I'm really happy now that those frets are all now level, like I say they're now flat on the top, we need to put that arc back in there, the crown, so I'm going to do that next, so bear with me, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Something else I said I would do, uh, I've just remembered about, is these frets are just slightly sticking out on this edge, only ever so slightly. So I'm going to take a flat file, like so, real smooth cut, number four file, I'm going to give it a wipe, and I'm just going to run down the side of these frets, at a slight angle, like so, and just deburr the edge of these frets. This over time, this wood would have shrunk just a little. Maybe it's not been nourished or, nourished or treated over the years. You need, to, you need to nourish and treat your neck every six months with a little bit of mineral oil, just so the wood doesn't dry up. But I'd have thought this would be enough now. Can I rub my finger down? And that's beautiful. That's absolutely fine. We're just slightly cut into the. Um, lacquer there, nothing major, we can just get a bit of oil on there and it'll be absolutely fine. What's happened is this wood has shrunk over the years. I can feel the edge of that one sticking out. Um, let's just again take a file. Don't know what you can see about, hopefully you can see it all. Just take a file. down the edge. We don't want to rebuttle anything, we just want to just come close in. And I think that is beautiful. That's absolutely fine there. And all we need to do there is just take a bead of mineral oil and just run it across the top. And that will re shine lacquer and I think that is that's fine that's really good so that's that done like I said I'm going to get it all taped up now and we'll start recrowning these frets okay so now we've leveled the frets across the whole length of the neck with looking this way you'll see where you are we have flattened the frets and we need to put that crown back in that arc there is what we call the crown and it's going to go along that way. And what we need to do is, I'm going to use various files to re recreate that crown. And first I'm going to use three edge file. The three edges here. And these sides are ground smooth. So it, when we carve into the fingerboard, we're not, going to we're not actually going to cut the tape because we have a smooth edge. And what I'm going to do is, with this file, far side, I'll file. And what I'm going to do is, on the far side, I'm going to arc it over toward the camera. And I'm going to start building up that crown. And then I'm going to come this side. And I'm going to, as I work the file, I'm going to arc it away from the camera and create that curve this side. And uh, once we're done, we're going to get that beautiful crown across the length. Now, when I've done that, I will go across with the profiling file. Just to even it all out and remove all the burrs. Then I'll finish off with a diamond file. And this is a really, really fine file with diamond grits in there. Which will give us a really smooth cut. So what I'm going to do is... We're going to cut in the frets across the top because what I'm going to do is I'm going to need I'm going to need to file these. You see how thick that line is there? That's a flat part, and what we need to do is we need to create that crown, and we're just going to leave a thin bead of black down the centre of the fret. And I'm going to do this middle one first. Just hit the camera there with me. Need, don't worry about that. I'm quite close to the camera, so I've probably gone a little bit louder. But all we're going to do is. I'm going to leave a line down the centre of that, probably about a third of a millimetre wide, and that area is where the strings are going to hit the fret. I'm on the far side now, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go straight for now, and then I'm going to start arcing the file toward the camera. Always cleaning the file. I'm going to come this side, 
I'm going to do the same this side. And now I'm going to arc the file away from the camera, so ever so slightly. And we're going to start building up the crown on this side. And hopefully you can see, we now just have a thin black line down the centre of the fret. We're going to clean it up. I think you can see it there. We're going to now take the profiling file. Give it a clean, give it a wipe. And we are just going to profile. Just to remove any burrs and to make sure we've got a nice even crown. Because using the free edge file is not an exact science. But there you go, that's absolutely beautiful. Well now, where that was flat on the top before, going that way, it now has that beautiful crown. And we're going to finish off with the diamond file. We'll just give it a little wipe. And there you go, and now we have built up that beautiful crown with a thin black line down the top or down the centre. That is where the string is going to hit the fret, it means we'll get no fret buzz. And what we need to do now, we have done that fret, is to just make sure that we're still level. Now I've removed no height, so it will still be level. And there you go, and the other side as well, and there you go, proving it is level. So, I'll move on to the next one. Pretty much, well it's exactly the same. I'm not going to talk like this, I'm just going to work. And again, there you go, nice thin black line down the centre of the fret, check again for level, perfectly level, and level, and there you go. This one, we don't even need to check for level because uh, there's nothing to check it with. So this one again, really simple. This last one I'm going to show you for now, and I'm going to crack on and get all the others done. Clean the file. Start leaning toward the camera with the file, build up the crown, this side again, start leaning the file away from the camera, build up the crown, that's beautiful. And there you go, we do, this is a 24 fret neck, so I have 21 more to do. So I'm going to crack on, just checking for level all the time. And that is three, perfectly crowned. Uh, next stage for these is, that, one's, that line's a little bit thicker than I would like it to be. So all I'm going to do is, just slightly thin that off a bit. And that is beautiful. Again, this one is just basically to deburr and to make sure we have a nice even crown. Anyway, we're because just doing this, I'm not going to get a perfectly even crown, uh, but this will give me a perfectly even crown. That's beautiful. And diamond file. And that is the first three done. I'm going to mark all the others up in marker pen. And I'm going to get the rest of them done off camera. It's going to take me quite a while to do this. Uh, the polishing is going to take even longer. So I'm going to crack on with this. Why don't you come back and see how we get on. So that's just about as much as I can do today. Because um, I've already got another guitar over there on the fret polishing table. And this is now, these frets are now ready for polishing. I've recrowned them all. You may just see in this light that, uh, that we've got a thin bead of black pen just down the centre. So where they were flat across the top, we've now been re across the whole length. And we're now ready to move on to the polishing. The frets are all level, all been re ready for the polishing. Once the polishing's done, we can put the guitar back together, get some strings on and get it set up. It will be done. So, 
I shall be back tomorrow um, and I'll show you a little bit of a polishing process and we'll, uh, we should have it all done, how's that? So this is where I begin to earn uh, my money on a job like this and it's polishing the frets. And I'm going to do this is, got the neck all set, it's all cushioned, it's locked into place, it's not going to go anywhere. And I'm going to polish these frets with six different grits of sandpaper. And I'll show you the sandpaper. I've already gone across one other grit for another job, but six different grits, and I'll go through the grits. 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, and I tell a lie, 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, and 2000 grits of paper. Should have them written on the back. That's 2000, 1500, 1200, 1000. 800 and 600. I've already been across with some 400 grit and what I do with the 400 grit is I go across the bevels, these areas just on the edge, just to smooth them over and I'll do this both sides and I've already done it and then once I've done that I'll go over and I'll just round them over like so going across the whole length of the fingerboard when we get to these areas just rounding them over, rounding them over, rounding them over, rounding them all over like so both sides and once that's done we just go across and we just basically we're going to put some scratches in this way and what we're going to do is then with the other grits of paper we're going to remove all these scratches going that way by going this way and we're going to use a coarse grit progressively getting finer and finer until all the scratches are removed and this is just this is not that is not polishing that's just getting rid of some of the scratches so what we'll do is we'll clean everything I'll show you exactly how we go along. Now I have very tiny scratches going that way and what I'm going to do is I'm going to polish this way. I'm going to polish all those scratches out and it's not about getting the fresh shiny, it's about polishing out all the scratches as well. And what we'll do is, I don't normally do it with 600 grit, I normally start with 800. 600 grit is normally for this, just rounding over the edges again. So that's what I'm going to do with the 600 grit for now. But we'll make a start with the 600 grit in a moment, so you may as well just watch. But this is where your money goes, because this takes hours to do this properly. It's not something you can do in an hour. And it really makes your arms ache. But you'll see there we're rounding over these edges again. Don't forget I filed these edges because these edges were sticking out, so I've had to got to go again and we've got to soften those all up. Then we'll go this side and we'll just turn the paper over. And it's just basically removing any sharpness or any burrs, just rounding them over really nice. And once that's done, we're going to start polishing with frets. Let's put just a little bit of wet on there. And we're going to start polishing these. And we're going to go right across the top. We're going to get right in at the corner, so far side corner, really pressing in there, near side corner, really pressing in, and we're going to polish, polish out, and already this is beginning to look shiny, the scratches are already being removed, and we've got six grits of paper to go, we're going to do all of the frets, I think it's a 24 frets on this one, so I've got six lots of 24, 144 frets to do, then I'll finish off with steel wool and this should be absolutely scratch free and super shiny by the time you come back. So I'm going to crack on, get these done again. Get into the corners, both sides, making sure you go across the whole length of the fret and already I can see these beginning to, the scratches are being removed. And they're coming up to it. It might look a bit dull at the moment, but once these are done, they're going to look fantastic. So we're already getting there. So there you go. I'm going to crack on with this. It's going to take me a couple of hours. So uh, I will come back and show you the results a little bit later. How's that? Okay, so we're getting right towards the end now. I've been across with the six grits for sandpaper, uh, ranging from 600 grit through to 2000 grit. That's all done. We can get rid of that. 
finish the polishing with finest grade steel wool grit 0000. I've got three frets left to polish and uh, I've already been up the edges. Do the edges first, once I've done the edges, straight across and it's just getting right in there. Across the top, get into the corners, into this corner and again finish off right across the top. And you may not really get the benefit of it right now but what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom in in a minute. Well, I'm not going to zoom in as much. I'm going to put a uh, magnifying glass on. Then you might just get how beautiful these frets are. And I can see this one's like a satin finish at the moment. This is super, super shiny, like a mirror, like glass. And the last one, across the top, get right into the corner again. I don't think I went right into the corner on the last one, so I'll do that one again. And that is it. And that is the frets polished. And that's taken me a couple of hours to get that done. They look just wonderful. Let me get, I know this magnifying glass may not be super clean, but I'll give it a quick wipe. And hopefully, you're going to be able to see how beautiful these frets are. Oh, try and get the light off it there. And they're just super, super sharp. Absolutely wonderful. I'm going to use it to have a look. They're super, super smooth. There's no scratches on there. Just, just wonderful. What do you think to those? Uh, absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to get the remove the neck, get the neck off this. Uh, I use this as a body substitute, just bolted through using the original neck plate. Can you see it there? A piece of 30, uh, 3 centimeter MDF, 30 millimeter MDF. Works fine, it's great for removable necks. So I'm going to get this removed, get it ready to go back on the guitar. I'm going to peel all the tape off. We'll get some uh, mineral oil just on the neck just to shine it up, give it a nice shine. And um, I will come and show you the neck in its entirety with all the frets now leveled, recrowned, and polished. And here we are. And this is as much as I'm going to get done today. And I have the frets leveled, recrowned, and polished. Also, if you remember, the frets were sticking out this side, so I filed all these edge edges down and uh, sanded them off. Uh, check this side as well, so there's no frets sticking out anymore. I'm just going to bring the neck up, and I'm going to let you just zoom in on those frets. I'll give you three seconds. One, two, three. And they are absolutely beautiful. Polished with seven different grits of sandpaper. Leveled, recrowned and polished. Absolutely beautiful. I've just treated the fingerboard with a mineral oil just to soak it in, get all the muck off. And it's just beautiful. So these frets are now absolutely level. Recrowned, polished. I guarantee that this neck will play absolutely beautifully. It's looking for a date again on this neck. There's nothing on there. Is it a two and something? Let me just have a look here. It can't be 2003 as I thought it was because this guitar wasn't made then. It's got to be a year 2000 or 2001. There's nothing on there. It just says KS2, which is Kelly Star 2. And it's got a date 411 on there. It's going to be it's going to be 2000 or 2001, isn't it? Absolutely wonderful with the right way there. No, not the right way. It's a reverse head stop. There you go. It looks absolutely fantastic. Give you a view that way. Bit of a close up. Uh, and we'll go this way. Just so you can see that those frets are level. What do you think to that? Has that any good to you? And there you go, they are so beautiful. So that's going to be great. So all I've really got to do now is put the neck back on the guitar, get the floyd rose back on, uh, get some strings on it, get the strings stretched in, get it all set up, and it can go back to its owner. I think I'm going to finish this one off tomorrow. I may get the strings back on and not film it. I might just get them on tonight, come back and film it in the morning once it's done, once the setup's finished. And uh, so make sure you're back for that. So setting up the guitar, I'm going to spend a little time here with Floyd Rose because Floyd Roses can be tricky to set up but I'm going to show you quite a simple way. Now the thing is with this one, it's not a regular Floyd Rose in the conventional sense in as much as, let me just get rid of that smudge on the guitar there, in as much as I've got a trem stopper installed in this guitar so it's going to make the installation of this tremolo a lot, lot easier. And by a trem stopper I mean 
Look at this device here. Screwed into the body and there's an adjustable bolt there, adjustable with an Allen key and it's got a tightening nut and what we do is, once we've got the Floyd Rose set perfectly level with the body, we tighten the nut up to where it's level, then we tighten the springs up more and that block is always going to pull onto this bar. Do you want me to zoom in a little? It's always going to pull onto this bar but it's never going to go any further than the end of this bolt which means this Floyd Rose is always going to be level so that makes things much much easier because we don't have to block the tremolo on one side or the other with a piece of wood just to get it level and what we're looking at is and it may not be perfectly level just yet the tremolo we're not worried about that it is actually tilting forward just a little don't worry about that at all at the moment all we're going to do is we're going to put the strings on and that is where we're at now putting the strings on is an art oh, it's not an art but it's a job in itself because we need to make sure We've got as much as this end of the string, and I've cut the ball end off, as much of the string in as we can get in. And what I've done is I've loosened this quite away, and between the saddle block and the edge of the saddle itself, and I've got it pushed all the way, and you'll, you'll hear it hit the bottom. And I want to show you how much string is going into that block. That's what you want. The before, there was only about that much in there, and it says it was slipping out, it kept slipping away. You've got to get it all the way, and that's a good centimetre. And let's check again, we're going to go all the way in, check the measurement and look at that, I'll just slip there, let's do it again. And that's how much string is going in the guitar, a good centimetre there, so let's get the string in. And we're not going to worry about the other end where the saddles are, we're just going to get these strings in at the moment and we're going to tighten the block. You'll see I have a set of business cards under the end here, just holding this part of the tremolo up. And we're going to lock the string in, and that is locked, it's going nowhere. We're going to bend over, bring it down to the saddle, and we're going to tighten it up. So, you don't need to hang about while I'm tightening this up, so I'm going to pause the video just for maybe a minute or so, just so I can get this string on, and I'll come back. I've moved on a little, I've got five of the strings on, I've got one more to do. These, by the way, are a set of Diodario XO 110s. Um, I recommended 10 sets, I, in fact I buy 9s and 10s uh, Diodarios now. And um, I'll show you from the ball end itself. And I this is the last one we're going to be doing. Right, so out of the way, I'm going to take my cutters when I find them. Cutters are going to remove the ball end. Right, so cutters out of the way. Again, I'm going to loosen this saddle. You're close enough in there. Come just a little more. The saddle seems to have sunk in on that one, but we'll sort that out in a moment. Again, end in. Pull it out, check how much we've got going in there. Can you see that? Almost a centimetre, all the way in. That's a shame, that's exact, that's how much, I would say. It's gotta be a centimetre there, going in the guitar. You always check, push it right in, till it hits the bottom, there. And once you're in, hold it in place, tighten the clamp. Clamp is really, really deep in there. I don't know why it's that deep, but you know, it's the way it is. Now, if there's one design flaw on this guitar, and there is one, it's the absence of a string retainer bar at the end. Because I'll show you, it'll be easier to just show you in a minute. But just bear with me while I tighten this string, and I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'm going to move the camera. But before we get onto that, let me just explain what we're doing at the moment. We're not doing any tuning at the moment. All we're doing is we're getting the strings on the guitar. That is the main thing. We're making sure the clamped at the saddle end, the clamped, how they should be clamped. Bell battery, please charge. There you go, fantastic. That's my portable speaker deciding it's a battery too low and it needs recharging. It was hilarious. So we're going to clip off. Let's 
So, like I said, all this part of the video about is about is just about getting the strings clamped in properly at the saddle end, and they are, and I do not have a tremolo on, so I'm going to use a screwdriver for a moment. And that tremolo is more or less where it needs to be. It's not high enough, uh, I'm not bothered about that at the moment. It's pulling forward too much. That's because I only have two springs in there. I'm going to be adding two more springs. Um, so we get more tension. I'm just going to do that off camera. I'm going to move the camera and I'm going to show how we set up, finally set up the tremolo. And it is really, really simple. And then I'll show you the problem down at the other end um, with the uh, nut clamps and the, uh, more of a nut and the nut angle. I do apologise if you can hear the washing machine in the background. Uh, my wife who tells me, informs me that she only ever uses a washer two or three times a week is on a seventh wash since Thursday and it's Tuesday today. Um, but anyway, uh, let's move on. So, got all the strings on, added some extra springs at the back, made sure the tremolo stop is set right, that will not move, and we've got the tremolo set absolutely level. There and there. What would be a floating position if you didn't have a tremolo stop on there? So that's beautiful. So what we've done is, set these fine tuners just under halfway so we've got adjustment both ways we can move it back or we can move it forwards so we've got adjustment both ways you see that nice and level there we can adjust up and we can adjust down we can adjust a lot more down if we need to uh, we can adjust up just about three or four turns down about seven or eight turns and we have got i've just set the neck i've set the truss rod i've set the action at the 12 fret 1.75 millimeters above the 12 fret on the low e 1.5 millimeters on the high e so now that tremolo is perfectly set, we can tune the guitar in. The guitar, this will only work now in dive bomb mode, you cannot pull it back because of the trem stop there, which means with the tighter springs there, even if we snap a string, this tremolo is gonna pull back right onto that block, to that trem stopper. It means we'll never lose tuning on that. That's why we install these trem stops. Absolutely brilliant. Um, and really, I could stop this video here right now, just for the purposes of, uh, of uh, explaining, because I just wanted to explain how we set a tremolo with a trem stopper. So I will end that little bit here. But moving on, so the problem, what is the problem I have with this? Well, it's at this end. And in particular, when we put the saddles on, you see, I don't know if you're going to see it from here. I hope you are. I'm going to try and hold the guitar so I don't want to knock it on anything. But here you go. Here is your problem. The string is not right down on the nut. When I put the saddles on here, or the locking clamps, it's gonna push the strings down. Like, so it's like that, like there. And it's gonna alter the tuning. What you'd normally have is here, you'd have a string retainer bar going across this way. It'd be a bar that sits on two screws either side of the truss rod cover, and it'd press these strings down, giving them, pulling it right down on the nut, and then moving off towards the string. Uh, String clamps, the uh, tuners here, machine heads. And um, this doesn't have one. And the reason I think it doesn't have one is because the truss rod cover is too wide. Now, I would like to install one on here. I think one should be installed because when I put the saddles on, which I'm going to do in a minute, get my little bit out of the bag, show the dilemma. It's going to send the strings sharp. Da, 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 da. So here we go. I'm going to show you my dilemma. Here you go. Got a locking clamp. I'm just going to stick it on. It's just loose for now. But when I tighten these, when I tune it in, once I've got the guitar in tune, once I tighten the string clamp, it's going to bend the string more. So it's going to send all the notes sharp. So it's going to make tuning a little bit difficult. What I'm going to have to do is, I'm going to have to uh, second guess where it's going to end up and just make an educated guess. Like so, so watch this. Once I clamp this down, it's going to push that string down that way. And it's going to make the note sharp. And I know it's going to do it because I've already tried it. So what you would ideally need would be a string retainer bar coming across here. Like so, you get, get where I'm at there. And it'll pull these strings down slightly. So we wouldn't have, we wouldn't sharp, but sharpen the note when we put the saddles or the string locks on. So that is my dilemma with that tremolo. But it's not, any, it's not something I cannot sort out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stretch the strings. 
I'm going to get it tuned in. Once I've got it tuned in, I'm going to lock the clamps down at this end. I've already set the truss rod, and the guitar will be ready. I absolutely guarantee that this tremolo will stay in tune. Even if you snap a string, it'll stay in tune because of the trem stopper at the back there. So, next part of the video, we will have this all done. I'll explain all the work we've done, what's been carried out, what exactly has been done. And um, that will be that. How's that for you? And here we are, all done. And wow, just wow. And I'm saying wow because I've had it plugged in and I've played it. And you're not going to get to hear that, unfortunately. But look at it. Jackson Kelly Star, only made between the year 2000 and the year 2001. I looked again at the neck and the heel um, area on the guitar body and oh, I thought it said 2004 or 2003, whatever I said. I looked again closely with a magnifying glass and it looks like it says the year 2000 on it. So I say this is a year 2000 Jackson Kelly Star, model number KS2, only made between the year 2000 and the year 2001 in Japan, reverse headstock, absolutely wonderful guitar. I've left the back cover off just to show that I've fitted a trem stopper. So we have the tremolo perfectly level, perfectly set. I'll just show you there. That means if we snap a string or anything, the guitar is always going to return to pitch because we have the springs tighter than they need to be. It's always going to pull that tremolo back. So it's always going to pull it level. So even if we snap a string, it'll stay in tune. It works brilliantly. I'm trying to remember what exactly I've done on this guitar because it has had so much work. So let's try and remember from the start. Right, all the electrics are gone, the original, or if they were original. I've put in a 500k alpha push-pull pot or pull-push pot which splits the coils. They split tremendously, it sounds superb. I've all got a 500k Bond audio pot on the volume, so you've got volume, tone, push pull or pull push split three way the great thing about this is you can you've got full humbucker full neck pickup both pickups on full together or both pickups with both coils split bridge split coil neck split coil it's got so many options so many sounds out of that i've played it this rolling mill pickup for clean is just wonderful but then again so is the dirty talk you can play clean on just the bridge pickup or both both split it sounds amazing um, so let's recap what we've done. All the electrics have been changed. I kept the original switch. I decided to keep the original tremolo. It's a Takuchi tremolo. It's fantastic. Works really, really well. It's solid. Pickups, we went with Iron Gears. Iron Gear Dirty Talk, which puts out about 16k, and a rolling mill, Iron Gear Rolling Mill, which is basically a modern PAF or patent applied for pickup. Beautiful, beautiful cleans. Lovely and blues. They're great for blues, jazz, cleans. You can crank it up and drive it if you want to, just absolutely beautiful. This, fantastic for metal, absolutely brilliant. This guitar has been transformed, it sounds wonderful. So we've had new pickups, a couple of iron gears in there, iron gear dirty talk, iron gear rolling mill. You normally go with a blues engine with a rolling mill, but I decided, because you wanted clean, so I thought I'd go for a modern PAF kind of sound. So I decided to go with a rolling mill and a dirty talk. They work superbly together. What else did it need? Well, the frets weren't level. So I've leveled. The frets, recrown them and polish them. They look absolutely wonderful. The neck plays superb all the way up and down. No rings, no buzz, no nothing. He also said he had a problem with the B string slipping out. Well, it just wasn't tight enough. I've shown a little bit of how to set the tremolo up properly to get the ends of the strings right deep in there. Loosen these more than you need to so you can get the string right in and deep. And give it, don't to over tighten it because you'll bust the thread. Uh, one thing, of contention where I don't like it. should have a string tree there just pulling those strings down a bit because you see how they come across down and across again you need a string tree at this end but I don't know if you'd fit one over this truss rod cover you may have to adjust the truss rod cover but that all done so when all said and done is fantastic I've had it plugged in it's, it's, it's in perfect tune it's in E standard I plugged it in and played it it sounds it just sounds wonderful it sounds how it should sound you're gonna be amazed at the cleans you get with this guitar it's just beautiful and the metal just on this pickup, wow, it's brilliant. Even in single coil, it sounds good. So, I think the guitar looks fantastic. It does need me to put the back plate on, which I'm going to do right now. I don't think there's a lot more for me to talk about. Um, so I'm going to get this on. So, recap it's a Jackson Kelly Star KS2 model from the year 2000, made in Japan. They were only made in Japan and they were only made for two years. Uh, you know, it's a KS2 because it's got a reverse headstock. 
Jackson tuners on there, Jackson back player, all the finish on the um, metal tremolo, the tuners, the neck plate, the, the uh, strap pins are all in a satin, like a brushed chrome type affair. Looks fantastic. Uh, pickups, the original pickups on this were the uh, Seymour, not Seymour Duncan, Duncan designed, made out in Korea. Seymour Duncan, I guess the HB 103s just because of the era, and I was absolutely right. There were the HB 103s based on the Seymour Duncan SH6 Super Distortion. Uh, are they any good? No, crap. I've never liked them, always thought we were crap. I don't know why so many people say, oh, they're a really good pickup. No, they're not rubbish. Maybe if you're playing some of the clean stuff, yeah, they'll be alright, but they're no good for metal, I'll tell you that for nothing. But anyway, there we go. It is all done. I've got the back plate on there. Blah, 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 blah. And it looks, look at it, it's, it's just fantastic. So, Darius is going to be so pleased with this guitar. I knocked him a little bit of money off. I've not charged him what I should have charged him. But it's still been an expensive fix for him. It's costing, well, labour, I'm charging him £135, which is really, really cheap for the amount of work I've done. Um, and he's spent £108 on bits. So it's costing £243 when all said and done. I'm not charging him for collecting it and dropping it off. He's only four, four or five miles down the road there. Um, but that's it, the guitar is done. It's been, oh, the knobs as well, they're new, the gold knobs. They're the only ones I've got that fit, so he's had to add them. Maybe he'll get a different colour later on. But that's it, the guitar is all done. Um, so we're out prattling on about nothing. I may as well just wind up and let you know where my website is and blah, 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 blah. So I'm Victor Christian. I'm your friend, friend. Before I go, go and check me out. At Facebook's the best place to check me out. Facebook.com forward slash NG17. That's Facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. -E -E this has been a wonderful product, but I've, uh, project. It's been a wonderful project, not a product. Wonderful project, but that's it. It's all done. Uh, so I'm going to move on to the next one. So I'm Victor Christian. I'm your fret friend. I'm going to do something else today now. So until next time, boys and girls, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I will see you soon.